This may be the scariest verse in the Bible, and at the same time, one of the more comforting verses. This is a passage that when you hear it, it's words that you only want to hear when read out of the book. You actually never want to hear this said to you by the Lord. And this comes from Matthew chapter 7. And let's start in verse 21. We're going to actually go back a little further than that. But I want to start in verse 21 and then work our way to the verse that should give a lot of people pause. And in verse 21, he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, which means there are a lot of people who claim to be a Christian, who profess to be a Christian, and are not. There are many who believe they are legitimately and are not. There are even those who know for a fact they are not, but still proclaim it to be so. There are some who proclaim to be Christians because they were told they were Christians or because they went to church. But he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father who is in heaven will enter. So that is a person that will make it in. But notice what he says also. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and, and in your name cast out demons and perform many wonders in your name? And look what he says. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. You depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, so a couple of things. The reason why that's scary is because you don't want to be the person that goes before the Lord and he says, I never knew you. Here you are thinking that you knew him, but you did not. And we're going to talk about what it means to know him in a second. But then what's also comforting about this, and we're going to spend more time on this as well, is where he says, I never knew you. Well, wait a second. How could that be scary and comforting at the same time? Well, I'm going to tell you in just a second. But the point that Jesus is getting at is a point that's been made all throughout the Old Testament. Now, it's not as though God doesn't know us or know of you. Remember, God knows everything about you, even to the point to where he knows the very hairs on your head, including mine. And so he has intimate understanding and knowledge of you. But the point is in the sense of a relationship. And this has been something that God has been after in the Old Testament, the children of Israel. They know about him, but they don't know him. Remember, we're speaking about an unbelieving and unfaithful Israel. And so let's go to a couple of passages so we can kind of see this. So in Jeremiah 2, 8, he says, the priest did not say, where is the Lord? And those who handle the law did not know me. So he's speaking of these priests who handle the law, who should know better, and they know of him, but they don't know him. And then let's go to Jeremiah 22, 16. He says, he pled the cause of the afflicted and needy. Then it was well. Is that not what it was, what it means to know me, declares the Lord? Then as we go back to Jeremiah 24, 7, he says, I will give them a heart to know me for I am the Lord and they will be my people and I will be their God for they will return to me with their whole heart. So look what he says. I will give them a heart to know me. This is important. And then as a matter of fact, this is not just a thing that's just in Jeremiah. I'm going to come back to Jeremiah in a second, but I also want to go to Hosea, Hosea 2, verses 20. He says, I will betroth you to me in faithfulness. Then you will know the Lord. The point that God wants them to have is an intimate knowledge and understanding of the Lord. In essence, a relationship. So when he says to know, he means to know them as far as a relationship is concerned. And then let's go to the part that brings this out even more. So this is Jeremiah 31. And let's start in verse 34. This is after God has spoken about it, given this new covenant. And he says it in verse 34, they will not teach again each other, uh, each man his neighbor and each man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them declares the Lord. And I will forgive their iniquity and their sin will I remember no more. So all of these things are happening to them to where if your sins are forgiven and your iniquity is no longer before him, your heart has been changed. He says that is what it means to know the Lord. And if we go to Hebrews chapter eight, look at verse 11. This is reiterated. And they shall not teach everyone his fellow citizen and everyone his brother saying, know the Lord for all will know me from the least to the greatest of them for I will be merciful to their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. So clearly what he's speaking about is salvation. And so let's go back then to Jeremiah, I mean to Matthew chapter 7, and let's read it again. Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Why is this scary? Because if he makes this point, I never knew you, notice what he's not saying. He's not saying, I knew you at one point in time. I used to know you. 
we once had a relationship, now we don't. This word that's used here for the word I never knew is the word udipate. Now, it's made up of a couple of words, not u and pate at any point in time. Now, there will be those that will say that, well, this is also resembling of an Aramaic statement that was made about four or five centuries later, and it was a customary statement to mean that uh, kind of like you're dead to me, uh, I don't know who you are. Like a person might say to someone who is bothered by what they've done, I don't know you, I don't recognize you. Well, that's not what Jesus is saying here. As a matter of fact, the Greek construct here is clear. He's clearly stating, I have never known you. The word udipate is clear in that regard. We don't want to bring up something from 300, 400, 500, 600 years in the future that may have been a customary statement by some people. No, in this case, this is clear what the wording means. As a matter of fact, it's what the Lord has been after. I never knew you, but I wanted to know you. That was been the statement. That was been the case all the way from the Old Testament up to now. It's what God has been after. And if we go to John 6, look what he says. As a matter of fact, let's start in verse 44. He says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him on the last day. Now, clearly he's speaking about salvation. It is written in the prophets and they shall all be taught of God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the father comes to me. So what is this in regards to? This is in regards to salvation and knowing and being taught of the Lord. He wants you to know him. And so the people that come to him, that he brings to him, they have been taught of the Lord. They know of the Lord. Not that anyone has seen the father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you that he who believes, the one that's believing, look what he says, right now, eke, right now, present tense, he has life into the ages. And so this is also uh, tied to when Jesus makes a statement, I never knew you, but to know him is to know him forever. And so going back to Matthew, this is why this can be also at the same time one of the scariest things, not even one of the scariest thing that you can ever hear. And so this makes this the scariest verse for a person who is not saved, who is not a believer, who may think he is after doing all of those things, done all those wonderful things. I've done all these things in your name. Well, going back to the Old Testament, we've got a lot of people who did all these wonderful things in the name of the Lord, but they weren't his. They would have their feasts. They would have their sacrifices. They would have their offerings. But God declared to them, I don't know you. And God was not saying then that uh, I I only I don't know who you are. This person that I see before me is not who I, who I know. No, he said, I've never had a relationship with you. But he says at some point in time, I will. I'll put my spirit in you and you will know me and you even your children and you will know me forever. That is his point. And so this passage in verse 23, then I would declare to them, I never knew you. Well, obviously that's scary to think that you've done all these, gone to church, read your Bible, but you never had a relationship with Christ. You never got to know him. There was never an actual genuine encounter, which is why Paul says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, he says, test yourself to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourself or do you not recognize this about yourselves that Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you fail the test. Make sure that Christ is in you. Now, why is this terrifying, scary verse also a comforting verse? Well, the reason why it's a comforting verse is because when he says, I never knew you, meaning that those who he did know in the past, he still knows today. And so if you were known prior, you are known today. If you are known today, you will always be known by God or else he could not use the passage. I never knew you. He would say, I no longer know you or I don't know you, just a simple um, way of saying it. But he says, I have never known you. And so if you have ever at any point in time been known by God, you still are known by God. That is if you are his. And so what you want to do is to make sure, as Paul says, test yourself, examine yourself. Does Christ reside in you? Has your heart been changed? And for you, if the answer is yes, well, then now this becomes a comforting verse. Because as he says, I will remember your sins no more. Amen. <music>